Theatre is not only my job, it's the love of my life, as it is for many people. So when people say that theatre is non-essential, it hurts. This translates to, it's okay to put hundreds of thousands of people out of work. So should we all get real jobs? Maybe we could. But would we be able to? Could you find a new job for every single one of us? It's an entire ecosystem that relies on those buildings or organisations for employment. It's hard not to talk about theatre so personally and passionately. It's made my life so, 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 so worthwhile and fulfilling. The people we meet, friends we make, the work we work create, we create, and, create the stories and the we stories tell. we tell. It provokes discussion, creates entertainment, and gives so many people a reason to live. Why did he upset you? He didn't. I don't know why he said that. And you said... Oh, that you're nearly 18. <laughs> he said that seems young to me. Yeah? He's acting like he's 34 something. Ew. He's 20 what? Turned 27 in March. So... 25th? Specific. Okay. I like him, Al. I can see that, girl. You're going to be bloody insta-famous dating him. He's probably got loads of girls messaging him, though. Ugh. I'm gay, even I know that bitches don't chase men less than five foot three. Mm-hmm. I'm small. Perfect match, then, boo. In that photo of us, he doesn't look smaller than me, does he? Mm. <laughs> does he? It's chill, you know, the world is changing. Things are more accepted now. Love is love. Ooh, the L word is being chucked around. <laughs> Allow it. You love him. I barely even know him. Oh. Oh, can I type something to him? No! You're not supposed to know! Why does it have to be a secret? Because he's old? Older! Yes! Only you, Cass. So weird. You just think, if you're attracted to someone, you'd just be able to say? Preaching to the choir. Just be able to be together without any judgement from society. I hope you're not... Trying to compare your old little man's crush to the trials and tribulations of my coming out story. You said he's not that old. Ten years. Nine and a half. Mm hmm. That's okay then. My nan is 10 years younger than my granddad. Are they happy? Yes. Well, fine. They do argue. Oh, Cassie. You're overthinking, okay? It'll be fine. Maybe... Maybe it's because he's in a public eye a little that it has to be secret. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's not that famous. But famous enough that you'd be able to publicly kick his ass if he did anything freaky or something. Do you think it's weird that we're messaging? Little. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I keep 
feeling guilty for flirting with you, especially as I'm feeling particularly frisky at the moment. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Who the hell uses the word frisky in 2019? He does. Warning signs. Uh. He then goes on to say that he's sorry and that he shouldn't be saying things like that to me. Corruption could welcome your way. Yeah. We talk a lot about corrupting me. Corrupting as in... Yeah. Because I'm the only one who hasn't, you know? Hasn't. Yes. Right. <laughs> and I'm sick of all of you mean bitches laughing at me because of it. Who is laughing at you? All of you mean <laughs> bitches. So, are you gonna fuck him? Uh, I think it's just talk. Mm -hmm. It's only words. Yeah, that's what he says. Like, right in the book. It's just fantasy. Just be careful, Kaz. And keep me updated. Hello? Sabah. Dan! It's 3 a.m. Sabah, is that you? No. Why? Is that blood? Fuck, fuck, fuck. I need your help. I don't know what to do. We were just. We were just having fun and then all of a sudden. Dan! Dan, slow down, okay? What's happened? I don't know. I don't know. One minute we were dancing and the next he came out of nowhere and I... I Who? I just... I just... Who, Dan? Who came out of nowhere? Paolo! What? How did he find you? I don't know. One minute we were just dancing and the next thing... He punched me in the face and all I can see is... Where is Zayna? Oh, I'm bleeding. Where is Zayna? Oh, he punched me in the face and I'm bleeding. I think he broke my nose. Dan, where the fuck is my sister? Oh, can you come get us, please? Is she safe? Look, please, can you just come get us? Dan! No, I don't know, alright? I've got blood down my fucking eyes. I lost her. You lost her? No, I don't... I don't know. It just happened so quickly, and he was starting a fight, and he just sort of split up. I told her not to fucking date you! <sighs> Is now really the fucking time to go on about how much you don't want me dating Well, you sister? lost her at a nightclub at fucking 3am in the morning, so now seems like the fucking perfect time, don't you oh, think? Oh, you would rather her going out with that psycho Paolo? Why are you calling me anyway? Fucking call her! I tried, she's not answering. Okay, you find her, and you find her now. Where are you? I'm coming. Actually, don't worry, you know. Don't worry, I'll find her. I'll find her, okay? Don't worry. Where are you? I'll find her, just promise not to tell your mum. Dan! Just promise me, alright? If your mum finds out, she's gonna kill me. Dan, if you don't tell me where you are in the next five seconds, I'll fucking kill you, okay? Real mature that is, Sabah. Talking about killing when there's a psychopath on the loose with a knife. What? <laughs> yeah, he has a knife, but don't worry. What do you mean, don't fucking worry? Look, if he was gonna use it, he wouldn't have punched me in the face. Dan, where are you? My battery is at 20%. Dan, where the fuck are you? Alright, I've got to go. Dan! Call the police! I've got to go, Emily's calling me. Dan, call the police! Dan! Em, please tell me you're with Zayna. Where are you? I don't know. Are you with Zayna? Can you check Google Maps? No internet. What can you see? Uh, I'm like... I'm like on a road. Which road? I don't know. What can you see? I can see the fucking road. What about a sign? I can't see a fucking sign. Fuck. How far are you from propaganda? I don't know. Dan! 
I don't know, right? I fucking ran. I fucking got blood down my face. Okay, just calm down. I am fucking calm. Just tell me, right? Where is it? 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 Where is
Stay out of sight if possible, but near to Angel Street. What is it, Dan? He's here. Did you say the attacker? He is here. Listen, Dan, I need you to stay calm and get out of sight. Dan? 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 Dan, can you hear me? Dan? What time is it? The daily refrain of the sunlight rings out sharp like an alarm clock. The churning old familiar wakeful day bears its light inside my brain and stings my retinas like citrus in a cut. A song that I did not request, it sears itself into my mind before I'm ready and the nausea that comes with it makes me blind. I furrow, the fever in my skin's what wakes me up, steady. I wished it were a lullaby. Borrowing back into myself, I wake up from a slumber I did not know I was in, a bliss of quilted darkness, reminiscing my unconscious lethargy, I long for somewhere I could stay forever, cocooned in the warmth of its paws like a newborn, cradled. I do not welcome this day. I do not welcome its noise, its brashness, its sterility, or the voices that will momentarily begin to seep on in. Quietly, at first, like the beginnings of a dripping tap, and before I know it, rushing over me, running in a hurry to my paws, pointing out my flaws, telling me what's wrong, what to do, how to think, look, pray. I claw at the insides of myself in desperate wishing that they'll leave me some respite. 
scratching thoughts beneath my nails. Just one night I had without them. One too few. The morning's due. And with it I must pay my debts because there's no rest for the wicked. Not just yet. One look at myself is all it takes to turn my soul inside out, upside down, dredging up the parts I most remiss. A fatal kiss. I wipe the night terrors from my lids and decide to face the day ahead, filled with a longing to be somewhere else entirely. Wake up. Splash. Soothing is the cool that hits my face. Water is my friend. I dance. I play. I drown. Stop it. Someone else is speaking for me. Who can tell when we're alone? Focus. Legs. Arms. Hands. Feet. A rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Cancel out the faults and call myself my own. Myself? Who am I? Who can tell? Who will I be today? What facet of myself will I put on? The clothes I've got are all soaked through. I long for newness. Rest. A clearing of the mist for just the beat. I pray for solace. I pray for calm. I pray behind my closed eyes, terrified that when they open, I won't be alone. Careful with my hands, I clean the deepest corners of my mind to pull apart the threads that intertwine with darker knots of thread forgotten, clotting up recesses of myself, blotting out the colours of its kind. I pull, I shake, absolving. <sighs> Breathe. And once again, I feel the freedom flood, spooling like water in blood, gradual then pulsing through, diluting reds to pinks to whites to blues. I breathe, unclogging my thoughts like I would a drain, the clinging fibres, the dirt within. I want to be clean, to once again begin from the beginning with no clutter or hurt, to seem normal, to be free, to play a version of myself that's squeaky clean, a notion, faintly, I still know, the memory of an afterglow, a tinkling piano in a far-off room, the freshness of a new bath, the colour of a petal in full bloom. I wear myself so thin it hurts to breathe, I sometimes wade through life though I were caked in mud and grieve for passing moments that I've lost, for what I try to search for in the fog, hands grasping loosely, clinging on to what I was. But the day is ahead, and Father Time is on his way, toying with the rays that through this yonder window breaks. Write me a sonnet for what I have lost. Tuck it away in that pocket of yourself, one closest to your heart. The day must start, and I'm grateful that this morning I have strength to dress. A snail emerging from her shell, slow, heavy, Telling of her hesitations and her fears. Rallying her strength, I plant my feet and sigh. I talk myself into each step. The shoes are old and worn, but I'm still walking. Threadbare, soul flapping, full of water from the rain. Yet I go on and on again. about people you don't care about on a platform you don't even use to its full true purpose of communication. Realise that's why they call it social media. Oh. Step two. Continue to scroll aimlessly through the lives of others and compare yourself entirely to their carefully constructed public personas. Feel dismayed at your own lack of effort to appear successful, cool and notchalantly attractive. Post a video of some pugs dancing to compensate. Realise that Dancing Pugs is exactly the kind of shared video that sends out the message that you actually give a fuck about what people on social media think of you. Which you don't. Although you secretly do. Take down the pugs. Update your profile picture instead, captioning it, Hello you cunt. Feel momentarily proud of your own witty ingenuity and casual corners before realising that you have your auntie Gladys on Facebook. Attempt to delete caption and fail. Delete photograph instead. 
Replace blank photo with old profile picture and receive no new likes. One new like. From Aunt Gladys. Step three. Consider calling in sick. Check the time. Realise it's a Sunday. Have a momentary flash of comic inspiration and search for your special polka dot notebook, specifically for future skits, to write down some ideas. Quickly give up after realising that you can only find your daily thoughts, weekly diary, and aspirations and dreams notebooks to hand and have no idea where your skit notebook is. Tread in an old bowl of cereal. Despair at how disgusting your room is and suddenly feel very tired. Step four. Slump exhaustedly back into bed and watch Gilmore Girls using your mobile device. Sigh as you realise your ex-boyfriend's user profile is still on your Netflix. Don't remove it. But do change your password.
emails on the moon are linked, aren't they? I don't quite know the science behind it, but I've heard how people say periods and the tide are linked. And the moon controls the tide, so... And every time I get a flare-up of hormones, and vent to my mum about hating everything about the world and how hard my life is, she just puts the kettle on and says, it's the moon, I'm telling you, us women, it controls us all. And I never even thought to question her now come to think of it. Until last night. I couldn't sleep. About two hours went past. Nothing. So I scrolled through TikTok for about 45 minutes. And I know that sounds like a long time. But you always think the next video is going to be funnier. The next video could be funny. And then suddenly an hour of your life is gone that you'll never get back. Then I turned to Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and scrolled for way too long looking at dogs, what women I want to look like, food I'll never make and other pointless shit people have posted. And yes, I wish I didn't spend hours of my life on social media because it's a waste of time, but does it stop me? No. And I had my headphones in so I didn't wake up my boyfriend and I listened to Claire de Lune on loop because I'm <clears throat> sophisticated. And I lay looking through the window. It was a full moon. I bet my mum's howling at it naked in the garden. Now look, the next part is, well it isn't my fault, but you know when they say don't go looking for answers you don't want, yeah, it kind of applies here. So I'm laying there and I roll over and there's a chest of drawers next to his bed. And it occurs to me that after two and a half years of dating, I've never actually seen what's in them drawers. Well, what better way to find out that at two in the morning when your boyfriend's asleep, hmm? I used the glow of my phone as a torch and I opened the first one. I had a load of paper in that just looked like old bank statements and boring letters. Next, I found some boring socks, Rubik's Cube, boring, 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 a broken watch, again, very boring. Then, in the last drawer... It was the most crammed, so I had to be careful I didn't wake him up. I found a box. When I opened it, these two photos fell out. So I turned on my torch on to have a proper look. And lo and behold, it's two photos of his ex-girlfriend. What the fuck? In the first one, they're both laughing at each other. You know, one of those stage pictures where her hand's on his chest as if she's like, Oh my god, you are so funny. You say the funniest things, you're the best. What a bitch. That one made me angry, but I thought to myself, no. No, come on, everyone has a past. It is what it is. But in the second photo I found last night was a picture of his ex naked. Fully fucking naked. Who even carries around nude photographs these days? This isn't the 50s, where people carry around little photographs of their partners in their wallets to remember why they love them. Oh, for fuck's sake. I mean, she wasn't even ugly. She looked amazing. She was lying there with her perky boobs, her shiny hair all sprawled out on the bed, and her incredibly even skin tone. Fuck. I shoved them back in the drawer, rolled over and just stared at him in his sleep. I thought, do I smother him whilst he's sleeping? Maybe I should scratch her face out of all the photos and leave them on his pillow and drive home before he wakes up. <laughs> oh, I couldn't bother to drive home. I thought I was going to come on my period a week early out of pure rage. I was also aware that if he woke up right now, how weird it would look me just staring at him. So I turned on my back and looked at the moon. Maybe it was a full moon that did this. Maybe they weren't even there. They were just put in my mind by the moon for like a wake-up call, you know? They are real because I checked this morning. I jumped out of bed and looked in the mirror and thought, right, this is a sign from the universe that you have let yourself go at 24. Is this what you want? You want to be lazy and have matted hair and eat a family pack of Doritos every night in bed, is it? Do you? Is this what you want? 
Then I was even about to go for a run and do this ab workout. And I thought, I can't believe I've started to doubt myself. <laughs> so who's a real winner now, Moon? Who loves themselves and is easygoing and not bothered about the naked picture of his ex? Me. London is sexy. Is that the right word? I mean, England isn't sexy like how Portugal is sexy. England is a bit nice. Yes, I'm using nice as an insult. You're all just green and clotted cream, aren't you? But London, London isn't that. <clears throat> yeah, if you can look past the red telephone boxes, the fancy bridge and famous clock, the big white tent, the lady in the gold hat. Oh, please, don't throw things at me. I know how patriotic you can be, but underground London. I'm not talking about the tube. But if you can look past the shiny tourist attraction, that's when you find it. London is sexy. The love of my life. There's no feeling like wandering through Covent Garden on a spring afternoon with a froyo, or arriving in Piccadilly Circus with the glaring lights, the world at your feet, bigger than you could ever be. But the cherry on the Londony cake is Soho. Soho is just the beating rainbow heart of London, a symbol of inclusion, and love, and hope. And where do I fit into this landscape? London is welcoming. I mean, the majority of London is accepting and welcoming. That's not to say I shouldn't be welcome elsewhere, but London celebrates people. You can be unique and be happy in your own skin. Sure, it's not perfect, but it's trying. Ugh! Do you ever get lonely? You must do, eh? Or do a bunch of you lot like live together? Or maybe that's nuns. Where do you live? Yeah, I guess that's not how this works. <laughs> you know, I won't lie to you, I might be a bit of a heathen. <laughs> Obviously. I mean, you'd know anyway, right? <laughs> what is that, God? Wouldn't know where to start. Bit of a long list, to be honest. I've been a very naughty girl. <laughs> Didn't mean that. Sometimes my mouth just runs off somewhere and I'm spouting all this shit. <laughs> Hayley! Shut up, right? God, just... You just... <laughs> Father, I think I'm gay. And that's not a shit spouting, sorry, uh, thing. But I think I'm actually gay. Like, as in, not just in a sexy, think about it sometimes with boys, they're kind of gay, but like really, fully, I want to wear Doc Martens, kind of gay. But I mean, am I? I mean, I've been having sex for like a year and I don't know, maybe I'm just a bit bored of it or something. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I told you there'd be a bit of a list so you can't really say I didn't warn you. Best friend. I just... I actually don't even know why I'm telling you this, but... I just need to 
talk to someone. Enter at your own risk. Would you like to come in? Please put in your headphones. Welcome to the Panopticon. Panopticon? Weird dream. Thank you for joining us. We're going to play a game. Each of you will be asked the question. Whichever option you select will determine your fate, so choose wisely. Best of luck! Dark web would you rather? Kinky. Ew. How about a warm up round? Player one, pink or blue? What kind of question is that? Pink or blue? Blue? Thank you. Player two, hot or cold? It appears we have a late comer. Welcome, Anonymous. Now you've got the hang of it. Let's play for Can real. Can you shut up? I'm trying to listen. Player one, you're the only one who can hear my voice. I'm going to ask you a question. You will have five seconds to make a choice. Are you ready? What? Player three has 65 BTC in their Bitcoin account. Player two has 20. One of these accounts will be emptied. Uh, Which one? Are you serious? Five seconds and counting. How am I supposed to- Four. Shit. Three, um, two, one. Player three. I choose player three. Thank you, player one. Moving on. Player three, while you were waiting, we've made some changes to your Bitcoin account. Would you care to take a look? What? This is an actual joke. There was no entry fee. You can't just... <laughs> Enter at your own risk. No. I'm done. I'm leaving. I wouldn't do that if I were you. You they might win it back. You've nothing left to lose. Would you like to keep playing? Fine. Shall we continue? What's happening? Shit, she's getting interesting. Play two. It's your turn. You are the only one who can hear me. I'm going to ask you a question. I'm sending you two photographs. Where did you get these? You can choose between the following options. Share the one of yourself to the group. Or share the one of player one with the group. You have five seconds. She's a fucking child. Four. This is sick. Three. Who can be there to know that? Two. All right. One. Jesus. Thank you, player two. I'm sorry. What did you do? You really should be careful who you sent this out to, player one. No! No, 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 no! Trying to leave player one, but we're having so much fun. Ha, ha, ha. Shit. We wouldn't want this to end up in the wrong hands. Your turn, play three. Maybe this round you'll get lucky. Just get it over with, will you? You have two options. Link the following video of player two direct to her employer's intranet. This will restore all of your Bitcoin. <laughs> Thank you, player three. Your Bitcoin value has been restored. That was fucking quick. Someone in it to win it. Player four, I have a question for you. I think everyone will want to play this round. What? This is fucked. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Panopticon. You have seen our players make their decisions, good and bad. Why are they typing all our now, names? Now, it's How your turn. My fucking name? Five. Stop trying to leave. Four. I don't understand. just make things worse. Three. What's happening? This two, is all a mistake. I didn't know. Look, one, I'm sorry, okay? It's too zero. late. Thank you. The results are now in. We have a tie. Player four, you have the tie-breaking vote. About? You're gonna pay for this. Please. Thank you. I can now confirm the results. Player one, you may leave the Panopticon. Oh my god, thank you. Thank you. Player three, 
You may leave the panopticon. About fucking time. Player four. You may leave the panopticon. Player two. You have been chosen. You will now be deleted. <laughs> deleted. <laughs> what are you gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming to the Panopticon. See you soon. Dave liked to be called David, not Dave. I don't know why. I still have him saved in my phone book as Dave. I think that was my way of rebelling against him. Against narcissists. And actually, he probably liked that about me that I rebelled against him. Not that he ever looked at my phone, like he never took it and went down it, only over my shoulder. Sam Hannigan sexy. We worked with Sam Hannigan. He was our mutual friend. He'd saved himself in my contacts as Sam Hannigan sexy. I mean, he was a sexy man. But why was Dave so threatened by me texting Sam Hannigan sexy? We're talking about Star Wars, and it's 2am. You tell me how you hated the sequels. I quite liked them. But seeing your name flood my WhatsApp notifications makes the disagreement so worth it. We talk about Galaxy's Edge in Disney World, and you express your concern over the ride's theme to the new films. I try to convince you, ask you to get on board with a holiday we'll never experience together. You tell me I'm a proper nerd now. I don't need to prove I'm cool to you. I know I'm cool. I listen to Childish Gambino and that's a choice. And right on cue, you sent me Sober on Spotify. I know you. I'm sorry. I don't know why you're apologising. Well, I do. But I don't know why you're apologising right now at 2.21am. It was easy, wasn't it? Comfortable. Too much fun. And I still miss you. Despite how fucking weird it was. The whole situ totally put me on track for who I am today. It's mad. <laughs> mad. Mad looking back. I started seeing a guy, and he knew I wasn't over you didn't help that I wore the necklace you bought me every day, and the day it broke, I sobbed. He broke up with me, obviously. Not just because of that. The broken necklace was the final straw. And I still wasn't over you. You're with a dancer now, classic, bet she's amazing. And I'm texting back like trying to be well positive. Like, I couldn't care less. But actually, it's like a knife repeatedly stabbing. I joke that I'm considering watching the Star Wars prequels. I know, right? It's a rough night. I shouldn't joke, I know. I'd love to say I didn't know how it got into sending those pictures. But somehow it did. I think it was me who started it. And you think you're the bad guy again. Hi, I'm Jen. 
I'm auditioning for the Royal Breach book. Nice to meet you. If you could uh, take a step back for me. Um, now, just before we start, do you want to tell us the most interesting thing about yourself? Um, right. Um, so, sorry, just on the spot a little bit there. Um, no worries. Should we start? I think I trusted you. Everything we shared, all, all those nights we spent. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, great stuff. Um, should we try it from the top? But, um... This time, let's do it in a French accent. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. It's only CV. Um. It's very impressive. Right. Um. Yeah. Cool. Hi. You okay? And you're here for the role of Rachel. Yes. Yes. Um. Whenever you're ready. I trusted you. Great, great. I'm going to stop you there if that's all right. Now, I want you to do it in the colour orange. Pardon? just want to see your interpretation. Okay. To think I trusted you. Everything we had shared, all those nights we, we spent together, did it mean nothing to you? You promised me we would. Okay, great. Now I'm gonna stop you there. Says, uh, says you trained in airport. Could we uh, possibly see some of that? I mean, it's been a few years since I've been. Just before we begin, I want you to really embody what it means to be female. You know, like vulnerable but strong and, and sexy but, but shy. A leader but, but not too bossy. Can you do that for me, darling? Great orange, thank you. Now, we'd like to see the piece a bit more strip down, you know, a bit more raw. So, uh, if you could just go ahead and take your top off, that'd be great. My top. The script didn't mention there would um, there be any... My agent didn't say that I'd have to... Just so we can see what we're working with. Trusted you and everything. Great audition, great audition. Um... Look, you're not that bad of an actor. It's just that you're not fat enough to play the fat girl parts, but you're not thin enough to be our leading lady. Sorry, that's that's just how it is. I think I trusted you. All those nights we spent together. I think we can stop you there. Thank you for that. But I'm afraid you're not quite what we're looking for today. Okay. Um. Can I ask for some feedback? Good luck. It. It doesn't fit our vision of Rachel. She's. She's more. You know. You should really try to uh, use your body to your advantage more probably help you get work. I need new pumps. They're fucked.
shoe. I like to get all my string out first thing in the morning before I go shoot them. I was always brought up to never swear in front of my elders. It's always just stuck. You're not a big fuck that, just freedom of speech. <laughs> Shit pumps on, grab my keys and head for the door. One last glance in the mirror. It's important to look tiny, as my man always used to say. Can't you stick a bit of lipstick on? I mean, most of them can't see anymore, but it's the thought that counts, the effort level. As the one person that they're seeing, I don't want them to think that I've given up on them or don't want to be there. So I swipe the lipstick onto my chap lips. I'm still embarrassed about my cheap shoes. I drive a Fiat 500 and I've heard all the jokes and I know I don't look like a Fiat 500 driver. It was my sister's. She has this flash job in the city and has since bought a new one. So she gifted me this. And I'm grateful because I wrote off my 2007 Ford Fiesta and couldn't afford anything else. As I pull up at the house and slide my chair back, the dirty pumps move away from the pedals. As I knock on her door, I know Abigail will be awake. She always is. I think that's why they put her first on my list. She's up at five every day, she tells me. <laughs> I brush her hair out and stir some porridge on the hob. You'd think I'm one of those Wallace and Gromit-esque inventions with six mechanical arms all designed to do part of the morning routine. <laughs> Abigail has a huge snag in her dining room carpet. I should remember this. As she always says, my son is going to come and mend that. Before I know it, my left pump is trapped. I fly through the air, arse over tit, porridge bowl flying. I land in an OT heap on her floor. Abigail looks at my feet. Those shoes look like shit, dear. Well, that's Gladys for you. Loves a pussy. Cat! Pussy cat, she loves cats. Jesus, sorry, I was just... Oh, here goes, the delivery van's coming up the road. It's honestly become the highlight of my day. My bank account is crying, but now that I have to self-isolate, it feels like the only contact I can get with the world. It's the element of surprise I love about getting deliveries. I just don't know what I'm going to get when. Is it a Depop order? Is it my weekly shop? Is it just a shit knitted jumper from my friend who's taken up knitting during lockdown? It's a pandemic lucky dip. A capitalist free for all. <laughs> oh my god. That a broom? Gladys is poking the delivery driver with a broom. No. Two brooms? She's taped two brooms together. Holy shit. That is the best way of enforcing social distancing I have ever seen. That's defo going on my story. <laughs> Oh God, he's coming over. He's coming over, shit, shit, shit. Right. Look, pretty, oh yeah, take this off, go. Coming! You saw none of this. Does your head teacher know who you are? No! At school, does your head teacher know who you are? No! Right. Mine doesn't even know my name. Didn't even know my name. I know there's like, I don't know, 900 of us. 
She called me Katie at the last full school assembly. I was accepting an award. She said, well done, Katie. Who the fuck is Katie? <sighs> she knows me now because she excluded me today. Mum's furious, understandably. The school rang. Oh yeah? You're grounded. Fucking grounded? I'm 16, like... Don't swear, Annie. You believe them then? Well, why wouldn't I? If even your mum doesn't believe you, what do you do? I promise you, I was in class. Well, what am I supposed to believe? I was legit in geography. Six period, 2 to 3 p.m., the last class of the day. The substitute teacher, <laughs> I mean, classic, right? Marked me as absent and Charlie as in. Our names are next to each other in the register. Easy mistake to make. Except, not really. Because all substitute teachers are really there for is to mark the register and make sure we spend the hours safely in that classroom. Let's not lie, she has failed. Charlie, Jessica and Melanie didn't come back after lunch today. They bumped. Charlie Monday, Annie Norman. Easy mistake to make. Not. Jessica and Melanie's parents covered for them. Would you believe? It's all over my WhatsApp. Their parents lied. Jessica's dog died and Melanie had an orthodontist appointment. Lies. So now it was just Charlie, well, me, who bumped. You'd think the school would have something better to do than ring around the parents. My mum, Donna Dukara, as I'm now referring to her, landed me right in it. Dropped me right into something I didn't even do, saying I should be at school, which I was, obviously. They're excluding you, Annie. Seems a bit extreme, sure. I have had a fair few problems throughout my time at the school. This was the last straw. The final strike. A strike for something I didn't even do. They forgot about my success with the netball team and how last year I captained us to victory against those dickheads at St Mary's. They forgot about my turn as Aussie in We Will Rock You in Year 8. It was unheard of for Year 8s to have a speaking role. But they did remember the time I called Mr Barrington a C-word. He is a C-word and a boring one at that. I thought teachers were supposed to be inspiring. And the time I broke the boy in the year above's fingers because he called me a slag. And the time I kicked over a bin because I was annoyed that people weren't recycling properly. Do you feel misunderstood at your school? I'm excluded. The GCSE is around the corner. I guess it's time to write off my future. <sighs> Hands up if you want to be famous. It's weird, isn't it? People always looking in on your shit, knowing every single detail about you, this obsession. <laughs> the 90s kid had it for definite. We was introduced to Big Brother and Oppado. Joe Bloggs and his one hit Christmas number one. As kids, our lives were spiced up. Hitting out our imaginary spice world tour bus in our heads. But 2007... Everything is instant. <laughs> Instant attention, instant fame, Instagram. What a gender when it's at home. And I do know we all want hot selfies. We all want to be told we're pretty. A 
attractive. Fit. Lost weight. Look good. Too far. <laughs> I was kidding. Here's my Insta abs. Insta outfits. Insta instant coffee. Personal trainers. Bloggers and gamers. Goals. And trolls. Fans and brands. It's completely consuming. And as we're consuming, we're conforming and adoring. False idols and jokers. And even the hippies, it's like Photoshop your own selfies. Suck in the tummy. Add a filter to the sunrise. Here's my perfect life. Here's how hard I try. And everybody is working towards that blue tick. Justify! Verified? Everyone, look how hard I've tried. They put up their hand and ask the question. Oh, how, long 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 how long until we get the blue tick you mentioned? How long until we get the blue tick you mentioned? How long until we get the blue tick you mentioned? How long? How long? How long until we get the blue tick? How long until we get the blue tick you mentioned? How long until we get the blue tick you mentioned? How long until we get the blue tick you mentioned? How long until we get the blue tick you mentioned? How long until we get the blue tick you mentioned? How long until we get the blue tick you mentioned? How long until we get the blue tick you mentioned? That's all you want when you're an overnight sensation. Instant fame and Instant success. We're always like, what's coming next? again another name another face another lifeless body in the street we can't even die in peace even our last moments are stolen ripped from us put on display like some freak museum with freaks objects of titillation and disgust no consent needed I would like to say I've lost count, but I don't think that's possible, not for me anyway. My mum, she knows what's happening over there, over here, but today she's seen the videos, multiple videos, lives taken in a minute. Five minutes, nine minutes. She lets out a wail I've never even heard before. What have we done? What did we do? I'm 28 years old and she's asking me. 
She's lived more lives than I probably ever will, and she still doesn't have the answers. I don't know how to tell her that. We didn't do anything. Sometimes we look for reasons to feel more in control, less helpless. Even if that means we blame ourselves. I don't know how to tell my little brother who is the coolest, sweetest guy in the world. Who is tall, who has tattoos and dyed golden afro hair that I'm afraid for him when he goes skateboarding with his friends. I don't want him to live in fear. He deserves more than that. Sometimes I wish I could feel nothing, not respond, not be so angry. Being regularly exposed to violence is supposed to desensitise us, so why do I feel so fragile? Why do I feel like crying, screaming, destroying it? everything in my path. I have died to many deaths that were not mine, Audrey Lord. I can't forget. I try and I try to force the images out, but I can't forget. We shouldn't forget. Thank you for being brilliant. <laughs> Lots of love. Thank you. Uh, see you soon. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye everyone. You're all amazing. You too.